sometimes spiritualize things, which is right and good, but sometimes we over-spiritualize things to a point where they become abstract, and they, it loses the day-to-day -day application in our life. And so there is natural laws, and there are spiritual laws. Natural laws, like laws of physics. You all understand that God created the laws of physics, don't you? They're natural laws, but God still created them. And uh, I have a list here of these are, oh, there's about 60 or so of just the, the basic laws of physics. All right, just basic laws. Um, maybe maybe if, you, if you recognize one, I'm not going to read all of them off, off the list, but if you hear one that sounds familiar, you just raise your hand, you know. Uh, Lambert's cosine law. You familiar with that one? All right. I mean, y'all, I mean, I'm not talking to stupid people here. I mean, y'all are intelligent. I'm expecting y'all to, yeah. Um, Kelvin Planck's statement. Um, Clausius' statement, right? Okay. Hubble's law. Well, we've heard of the Hubble telescope, so, hmm, he was a scientist. All right. Okay. Bell's theorem. Okay. The, some of them, they, they least... They, they ring a bell, right? <laughs> I didn't even plan that. It was pretty good. Right? So. All right. Uh, Maxwell relations. Carnot's theorem. Fermi paradox. See, these are all laws. Some laws are more obscure than others. All right. How about Archimedes' principle? We ought to hit, yeah, so you know what that is. Um, Archimedes' principle. Any fluid applies equal pressure in every direction. This pressure is a result of the weight of the liquid. When an object is partially or completely submerged in a fluid, it exerts an upward force on the object. This upward force is called the buoyant force. So if you've ever been on a boat, right, this is a very important law of physics, isn't it? See, we don't, even though you're not aware of that law, it's still very real, isn't it? Yes. All right. How about Avogadro's hypothesis? Yeah, I see some hands. You've heard of Avogadro's number. All right. Some of you students, all right. Um, that's the condition of temperature and pressure are the same and having to do with gases and things. Right? Again, it's, it's a law. It, it's, you may not realize how it's affecting your everyday life, but it is. It is. All right, how about Bernoulli's principle? All right. We got some over here. Any, any other people? What is that? A fluid with slow speed will exert more pressure than fluid which is moving faster. So, like, take a river that's wide, the water's moving slower, but it will exert more pressure than when it narrows down to a stream. See, it's count, counterintuitive, but it's a law. And that's at work in our lives, right? Ohm's law. Anybody heard of Ohm's law? I know uh, Jeremiah has. He's an electrical engineer, right? That... That's one of the foundational principles that explains how electricity flows and moves. Well, if you have a cell phone, Ohm's Law is a very real thing in your hand every time you use it. That's the basis that even makes that possible, the understanding of that law. Amen. So these are, these are laws that God made. See, we don't make these different men that the laws are named out. They didn't make the law. They simply discovered the law. Man doesn't make these laws. God makes them. We discover them, right? And so as real as these things are, hit one more here. Anybody heard of Murphy's Law? <laughs> Y'all have heard. Listen to this. Listen to this. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. It also states that if there are two or more ways to do anything and one of them potentially results in disaster, Someone will do it. 
<laughs> so, how many have experienced? Yeah, right. It says, it says, but the expression that most conveys the explosive nature of Murphy's Law is without a doubt the notion that no matter what you do, you will invariably make the incorrect choice, and it just may be right. <laughs> All right. So, but you get the point here. These things are real. They affect our everyday life, don't they? Well, the law of words is just as real as any of the laws of physics and affects our everyday life. How about the law of gravity? Whether you understand the law or not, it's working, isn't it? So whether or not you understand right now the law of words, it is working in your life. Now, maybe this isn't seemingly the most spiritual message that you've heard, but I guarantee you it is probably the most spiritual message that you've heard because this affects every part of your life. Remember this, if you're a born-again child of God, your relationship with God began with words. Romans 10, if you believe in your heart and what? Say. Say words. Right? You shall be saved. So words determine your destiny, whether you're going to spend eternity in heaven or in hell. Well, that's pretty serious, isn't it? And you think, well, now, pastor, you know, words, you know, that's, you're kind of getting legalistic about everything we say. Uh, absolutely. Words are very legal, very legalistic. Laws, that's what legal has to do with law, isn't it? Aren't you glad that the principles of aerodynamics are laws that don't change? You'd never know whether or not it was safe to get on the aircraft. But because those laws are legal, they're unchanging, you can build an aircraft that will fly. Amen? So just setting you up there uh, with that thought as we get into the Word of God talking more about this. Whether you understand it or not, the law of words is working. But when we understand it. Think of words this way. Uh, the Greek word for words is logos. L-O-G-O-S. Logos. Or logos, however you want to say it. And I think about Legos. L-E-G-O-S. Everybody knows what Legos are. I had Legos when I was a kid. Now Legos are so, you know, they build spaceships with them and Star Wars craft. I mean, it's, it's nuts. We just had blocks, different size blocks and things. But the idea was you take these pieces and you build something with them. So you could see it this way. Words are building blocks. And you have the right as a human not just as a child of God, but because you're a human being, you have the right to arrange those blocks any way that you like. You can. You can build whatever you like. It's up to you. You decide what you're going to do with words, what you're going to do with your words. Hallelujah. So we remember this, that in Genesis, the first chapter... God saw that the earth was void without form, right? What's the next thing that happened? And God said. God said. In other words, everything that we see now in the, in the earth, the universe, all of it is the product of what God said. Can you see how big a deal words are? Words are super important. God said, let there be light. Hallelujah. God believed that when he spoke, it would happen, right? He's, he's a God of faith. God said, and there was light. 
with words he formed the earth. Then remember he went on to say, let us make man in our image. So we're made in the image of God. We, God is a spirit. We are a spirit being. We have a physical body. We live in this physical. But we are a spirit being, spirit being first. Made in the image of God. That means we operate like God does. He gave that to us as humans. There's no other, no animals. No. We are, we are the only ones made in his image. And the same thing is true with us. Because we are created like our Father, God operates with words. Then we, you and I, operate with words. The words of our mouth. The things that we say. Hallelujah. Uh, Praise God. Y'all are really quiet. I trust that you're listening. We live in a word-controlled universe. Dad Hagen, y'all know who Dad Hagen is. He said this about your words. He says, we cause trouble ourselves much of the time. Many dear Christian people don't keep their mouths and tongues under control. They're always saying wrong words. Just about all they ever talk about is what a battle they've had with the devil. Words of defeat are wrong. Words of failure are wrong. Words about how the devil is hindering you, how he's keeping you from success, how he's making you sick and keeping you sick are wrong. Such words give Satan dominion over you and create troubles. That's what Dad Hagen said. You see, the devil, the enemy, he works diligently to get us to use our words against ourselves. He has no power over us. If you're a born-again child of God, Satan has no power over your life whatsoever. Jesus said, I give you power over all the power of the devil. So Satan has no power. He has no authority over your life because you're a child of God. Born again, blood washed. The devil cannot enforce his will or his plans on your life. He does not have the power or the authority to do so. Well, then how does he do that? How does he, how does he get entrance into our life to create havoc, to create problems, to do things? He gets us to do it through our own words. That's how, that's the number one way that he gains entrance into my life is through my words. Well, that makes my words pretty important. The psalmist David said, set a watch, O Lord, by my mouth. Set a watch. Why would he say that? (laughs) So I don't say things I should not say. Right, so this is not a, 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 a thing of, you know, just a matter of, you know, you're a Christian now, you, you shouldn't say this anymore, you shouldn't swear anymore, you shouldn't do this. Uh, no, that's, that's like really low level. The, the reason is because you begin to realize how important your words are. And when you say something, there's going to be a product of what you say. And see, the enemy is a master because he'll give you a thought. The devil will bring a thought across your mind. And then he will bring an emotion that goes with that thought. Doesn't he? Makes it seem so real. And the next thing you do is say it. Uh, You know, uh, you have a symptom in your body maybe or something. Oh, I don't feel well. Now, I'm not talking about just ignoring things. But as a believer, we, we get into, you begin to learn the word. The first thing out of your mouth is, I resist sickness in Jesus' name. I deny its right to be in my body. Jesus bore my sicknesses in his own body on that tree. By his stripes, I was healed. Right? That's, those are my first words. 
instead of, oh, man, my leg really hurts. And again, I'm not talking about ignoring things. Nothing wrong with going to the doctor if you're having difficulty. But the first things, I've, I've learned that so often when the first words out of my mouth, especially concerning my body, is the right thing, it comes to nothing. Say, no, you know, my throat is scratchy maybe. Or, you know, start getting stuffy sinuses. Oh, if I guess it's, it's allergy season again. Here we go. Well, then it's on. But if the, my first response is, no, in Jesus' name, I'm redeemed from the curse of allergies. Jesus redeemed me from the curse of sickness. My words, the things that I, the, my words out of my mouth, set the course. And the quicker I get the right things out of my mouth, the better off I am. Like I said, just about every time, it just amounts to nothing. Hallelujah. I mean, how many of you ever had a headache and the first thought is, maybe I have a brain tumor? Yeah. You don't want to admit it, but you've had the thought. Maybe a persistent headache. Well, I, 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 might, I might have a brain tumor. That's what the devil will say to you. He's, he's baiting you. He's trying to get you to bite on that one. How do you bite on it? You begin to think about it. Think about it. Think about it some more. You keep thinking about it. Next thing you know, right, we, we open the door to it. Instead of responding, oh, no, devil, no, no, headache, you have to leave my body in Jesus' name. Listen, if the world was formed by words, then how much more our bodies are governed by our words, our physical body. You say, well, you know, that's, that's a stretch. Uh, no more a stretch than the law of gravity. No more a stretch than any of the laws of physics that we mentioned and the, the bunch of others that we didn't. We don't say, well, that's a stretch. The only person who would say that was somebody who didn't understand it. We're talking about the law of words. Amen. This, this ought to be such a blessing to you because you understand once you get a handle, a bridle on your words, you begin to steer your life in a different direction or any part of your life in a different direction. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 20 says this, A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. Notice it doesn't say from what he puts in his mouth. Right? So right there lets you know it's, it's not really talking about necessarily just the stomach. There's something else being said here. Because what, it, what would be the fruit of your mouth? Do grapes grow in your mouth? Pineapple or watermelon? Chickens grow in your mouth? No. Nothing grows in your mouth. No, what is it talking about? The fruit of your mouth. The fruit of your words. The fruit of the things that you say. It says a man's stomach will be satisfied by the fruit of what he says. Is this, is this registering on you all this morning? From the produce of his lips he shall be filled. The next verse says, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. That's pretty amazing. Could that possibly be true? That death and life are in the power of the tongue? The story that Dad Hagen used to tell. It was an amazing story, true story. He um, had gone to the hospital. There were these, uh, this family. He was somewhere ministering. They asked him to come because there were two brothers, and one of them was in the hospital. He was in a coma. He was 39 years old, just a few months, two or three months short of his 40th birthday. 
And there he is. He's there lying in a coma. The family had asked him to come. So he was there. There was Brother Hagen and this man's brother and his parents and family gathered in the, in the hospital room there. And they were praying for him, praying for this man. And uh, so they were just all around. They're all spirit-filled believers. They were praying in other tongues. You know, what, uh, when you don't know how to pray, thank God for the Holy Ghost, right? Just praying in the spirit. And Brother Hagen said, I heard these words on the inside. Words, it said, spiritual laws have been set in motion long ago and cannot be changed at this time. So he thought, hmm, that was interesting. And so as they were praying, he, he stepped over to this brother of the man in the, in the bed and said, I don't know if this means anything to you, but I heard this on the inside, that spiritual laws were set in motion long ago and cannot be changed at this time. Brother Hagin said when he said that to the man, he jumped like he got stuck with a pin. And he said, he said, you know, when we were teenagers, we'd be out in the barn, you know, roughhousing and playing and stuff, and, and then we got tired, we'd settle down, we'd just sit there talking, and this brother, the one in the, in the coma, he said, you know, I'll never live to see my 40th birthday. I'll never live past 40. And so the, the brother was doing well. So he recalled numbers of times through this man's life. He'd say, I, I'll, never, I'll never live to be 40. Wow. And so the man that was in a coma just shortly after that died. Huh. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. That man said, he believed it. He believed what he said. The reason it couldn't be changed, the man was in a coma, and he's the one who set the course. Now, if they could get him out of the coma, they'd have a chance at getting him to change course with his words, get him to believe different, get him to talk different. But without that, it can't be changed. There's some things prayer can't change. There's some things that your words have to change. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of your words. Hallelujah. Well, that's, that's amazing. Isn't it? Amazing testimony. True. That just, just makes it so real to us. Spiritual laws. Hmm. Well, that means words are spiritual. They're not just words. Words are, like I said, they're like Lego blocks. Or you could think of it this way. Words are like spiritual containers. They're containers. They contain things. Words contain power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, remember what Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty three. 23. Some of the most amazing words that he spoke when he said, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe the things he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatever he says. Words. That was right after he had cursed the fig tree. What do you mean he cursed the fig tree? He spoke to it. He used words to affect that tree. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Jesus didn't follow it up saying, you know, now listen, I, I am the son of God. That's why I can do this. I'm, I'm the anointed son of God, and when I speak, things change. Now, y'all are just disciples. Y'all are just regular humans. Is that what he said? What's the first word of chapter, uh, Mark eleven twenty three? 23? Hmm? For assuredly I say to you, whoever. 
I guess, whatever translation we're looking at. It says, I say to you, whoever, whoever, is there any whoever's in here? Do you realize that a, who, a whoever, not a who, a whoville, no, whoever includes people that are not born again. In fact, when Jesus said this, nobody was born again. This is a law, the law of words transcends spiritual position. So the, the worst sinner, the, the person who's the farthest from God, the law of words, just like the law of gravity, is no respecter of persons. The law of words is no respecter of persons. Hallelujah. That's why the, the, the worst sinner, in just a few moments, with some words from his mouth, believe, here in the gospel, believe the gospel says, I believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. I believe that God raised him from the dead. The greatest miracle known to man happens. Why? Because power is released through his words. Miracle power. Resurrection power. He's trans translated immediately out of the kingdom of Satan into the kingdom of God's dear son. Hallelujah. All the sins, all the, the terrible past that he's been guilty of is washed away, and now he's a brand new creature in Christ. Whoo! Because of what? Words. That power was released through words. Hallelujah. TPT, the, trans, uh, the Passion Translation, says it this way, Proverbs uh, 18.20. Your words are so powerful that they will kill or give life. Hmm. Your words are so powerful, they will kill or give life. Wow. Say that backwards. Wow. But it's true. Now, sometimes, I, I told you that testimony, sometimes we think, you know, of physical death and, and living physically. Absolutely, yes. But on every scale, it works. Hallelujah. Your words can cause cancer cells to die. If your words can cause your physical body to die, then your words can cause cancer cells to die. Hallelujah. Amazing. I've shared this testimony before when I was in my early 20s. I had warts all over my left hand. And I just, anywhere, there was a, like a couple little ones on my right hand like it was going to spread to my right hand. Just, just ugly looking. Just nasty. I, I hated them. And especially in, in cold, winter, cold weather up north up there, your hands get dry. And, you know, close my hand like that and they would crack and bleed. And it was just nasty. Nasty. And you know what I did? I got tired of them. I tried a, you know, compound W a couple times, and it just it seemed like they spread. I mean, there was like a whole line of them across here and on my knuckles and on my fingers, and ugh. I started to use my words against them. My words caused those things to die and disappear from my body. And I added to it, never coming back. I just kept saying, I used those words. Every time I looked at them, I curse you in Jesus' name. I command you to die. Hallelujah. Actually, the fact is, I didn't even have to use the name of Jesus because God gave me that right as a human. I could have just, I just cursed those, commanded them to leave my body. How much more if I use the name of Jesus? Right. right? Well, it was just, I don't matter, I don't remember how many weeks it was because just one day I looked down and noticed they were gone. I, I, 
It's not like I woke up one morning and they were gone. It was just like I realized they were gone. What happened? I used my words. Life and death are in the power of my tongue. I used my words to cause those warts to die and leave my body. Hallelujah. It's amazing to me how many ways God has made healing available to us. There are, he loves us so much, there are so many ways that we can receive healing. I mean, I could have had somebody pray or lay hands on me, just whatever. Or, you know, gone down on a line or, I mean, so many ways. But that was the way that was quickened to me, was speak to them. That's not the only way, but it was a way that was in my heart to deal with them. So when I spoke, and I, I meant it when I said, I curse you in Jesus' name. Get off my body. I meant it. I wasn't just flipping off my head. I, I meant it. Hallelujah. All right, all right. How about the Amplified Translation? A man's moral self shall be filled with the fruit of his mouth, And with the consequence of his words, he must be satisfied, whether good or evil. All right. With the consequence of his words, he must be satisfied. He must be satisfied. That lets me know this. God is not going to override my words. He's not going to override your words. You have dominion in your life, so your words are going to matter more than God's words. I know that doesn't sound, sound right to you, maybe. No, God's word. Only if you give God's word. That means you put God's word and you begin to say, you say what God says, then God's words will have the power. But if you don't say God's word, God's words, then he will not override what you say to do something. Hallelujah. Is this making sense to y'all? This, this is something that we have to continually go back to and remind ourselves because it gets away from us. And before we realize it, we've succumbed to the flow of the world. And yeah, baby, I just see it how I, I just call it how I see it. You know, that's like, yeah, that like, <laughs> you know, I, I've got some wisdom here. I just say it like I see it. Now, that's, that would be a fool. But that's, that's the world's wisdom. Hallelujah. All right. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 2, it says this. Thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. The the Word of God has so much to say to us about our words and the things that we're saying. Again, this is not designed to bring condemnation to you if you've been saying some dumb things. (laughs) All right. How many people have said stupid things before? All right. And, you know, in a a minute we'll have a, a prayer line for liars for anybody who didn't raise their hand. Because we have all said things at some time in our life that we should not have said. So this is not to bring condemnation. This is to bring uh, freedom, realizing that we can change the things that we say. Many of us have been stuck in a rut in our life for some time because our words have called for that. That's, the, that's what we've been saying. And if we want to change course with our life, we need to start saying something different. This is so practical and real and, and natural that it gets past us. Our, our, whether it's our income level, our bodies... Some, we struggle with things in our bodies for years because we never change what we say about our body. 
Yeah, well, you know, Pastor, you don't understand. This is just hereditary. Agreed. But because it's hereditary does not mean that you don't have the power and the authority to change it. If Jesus said, whoever says to this mountain, he was pointing to a physical mountain. Whoever shall say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. That's amazing that anybody could speak to that mountain. And if they believed it in their heart, not didn't doubt in their heart, but believed what they said would come to pass, they would have exactly what they, that mountain would have to obey them. Understanding he was looking at a physical mountain because he had just cursed a physical fig tree and the, the disciples were awed. Then Jesus scaled it and pointed to that mountain. Well, if it works on mountains, it for sure works on our bodies. You know where else it works? It works for sure in our finances. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. This, this, this year, our, our overarching theme for this year is the plan of God. The plan of God for our life, the plan of God for this church. Well, how is the plan of God going to happen in my life? Is God just going to say, all right, this is my plan. I'm putting you in it? No. My words, my words are going to be the determining factor whether I walk in the plan of God or not. Hallelujah. This is just the truth, y'all. I mean, this is just the bare bones, the reality. Right? Right? Can you see how this is a very spiritual message? Because this affects everything. It affects your spiritual life. It affects your natural life. It affects your finances. It affects your family. Hallelujah. Some folks just, you know, they're just yappers. Maybe you work with somebody. Maybe you live with somebody. They just, they just, they just yap. They just talk. The, another proverb says, in the multitude, King James, in the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. That means if we talk too much. Why, why would it say that? Because words are blocks, building blocks. What are you building with your words? Right, so I would like somebody who just likes to talk and talk a lot, they're just like, they're just taking the blocks and they're not even paying attention. They're just putting them together and that one sticks on that one. And when it's all said and done, what is it? Oh, I don't know. I was just sticking them together. Right? But somebody who pays attention, they're choosing which block goes where because they're building something. They have something in mind. I'm building a house. Right? I'm building a garage. I'm built, I have purpose in what I'm building. I'm take, taking those blocks and putting them in place with a purpose. I'm building something with my words. What are you building with your words? This is really exciting because if you have a vision in your heart for something, you know this, you can start using your words. Maybe you don't have the money, but if you start using your words, you can begin to move toward the reality of that dream. Hallelujah. Because the fact is, even if you did have the money, you'd still have to use your words. So really, money is not the issue. Just blew that one up. Money is not your issue. Money is not your problem. Your problem is about an inch and a half below your nose. Right here. We're not using 
our words to create what we want. What you want? What you want. Not just what you need, using your words to create what you want. Hallelujah. All right. Glory to God. Proverbs 21, 30, uh, 21 23 says, Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue, whoso, this is again, this is King James, whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue, keeps his soul from troubles. Keeps his soul's soul from troubles. I, I watched this little clip the other day. And this man got pulled over by a police officer. The, the police had this one road blocked off to his neighborhood, so he went around and, you know, it wasn't a big deal. But the man in the car, uh, just his mouth, the way he responded to the officer, just turned what was, would have been nothing at all into an ordeal. Because he couldn't keep his mouth. He had an attitude, and his attitude came out in his words, and just, he ended up with, you know, hundreds of dollars in tickets. <laughs> because he couldn't keep his mouth. And now, now that's, we chuckle, but how often do we do that at the house? Come on, husbands and wives, how often... Do we just have to say it? You just, you just had to say it. And you knew ahead of time what was going to happen. But you just had to say it. Whoever keeps his mouth keeps himself from trouble. The, translate, uh, the Passion Translation. Watch your words and be careful what you say. And you'll be surprised by how few troubles you'll have. That lets me know that the majority of my trouble is of my own making. How about on the job? Yeah. I, I just make trouble for myself if I don't keep my mouth. Or if I, just, if I just go with the flow. Everybody talks about the boss behind his back. He's just an idiot. You know what? I mean, how did he, how did somebody like that become the boss? You know, maybe you didn't say that, but somebody said to you, and you're like, yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> well, I didn't say it. You agreed with it. Your words agreed with what was said. Yeah. Right. So, those words went out there. So, when promotion time comes, all of a sudden there's words six months ago that are a problem now. The boss didn't need to hear them. The boss doesn't have to, have, have to hear it. Why? The law of words. The law of words. What you say. You're going to have what you say. Whatever, uh, whatever a man soweth, that shall... What does it mean, soweth? Well, a big part of that is words. I mean, it can also be actions, what actions you sow. But a big chunk of that is whatever you sow. Whatever you say... That's what you're going to reap. And if you sow disrespect, if you sow complaining words, if you sow picking words, you know what I mean by picking? Just pick, pick, pick. What are you going to reap? Listen, that, see, it's a law God himself is bound to. You're, you're going to, oh, man, I got this test coming up. I know I'm going to bomb it. All right. So don't cry. 
when you get the big flag. Don't, be, don't act disappointed and, and like you're so hurt. When you, that's what you wanted. That, that, well, that's not what I want, but that's what you said. And your words set the course. How did that? Well, the next step after that was there's no use in even studying. I'm so far behind, there's just no way. <laughs> Hallelujah. This fits me just as the same as it fits anybody. My words. My words, the things that I say, the fruit of my mouth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. James, we don't have time to get into James, but he talks about the rudder of a ship. Our, your tongue is like the rudder of a ship. The rudder sets the direction for the ship. Hallelujah. And back in that day... Ships were wind-powered. So nowadays, you know, if you want to use a sailboat or if it's a powerboat, you know, the plan of God, you see the plan of God for your life, but your words are going to be what power you that direction. Hallelujah. See, really, it, it comes to a, a very disciplined life. It, when, you, when you meet somebody who's very disciplined in their life, you'll find that often they're not somebody who talks too much. They tend to be a, a person of discipline in all kind of areas of their life. They're disciplined where they spend their time. They're disciplined with their words. They've, they've, maybe they don't think of it in the terms of the law of words, but they understand how valuable the words they say are. Amen? Well, this just explains it right here, doesn't it? This is why. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, let's, let's tie this up for the moment. Your future today is the first day of the rest of your life. Isn't it? That's a fact. Whether you believe it or not, it's still true. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. And your future, tomorrow and the next day and on the rest of your life, is determined by what you say. What do you want the remainder of your life to look like? What do you want to accomplish? What do you want to achieve? Where do you want to go? What do you want to do for the kingdom of God? It's going to be determined by what you say. What do you want for your family? What do you want for your children? Hallelujah. See, your, wor your words are powerful because when you begin to say, there is, because it's the law, there's power released, you'll find yourself moving that direction. Just like if you're, if you're always saying, you know, I just, I just, I don't feel well. You know, I just, I just seem like I struggle so much. I, I, don't, I don't feel well much. And you talk about it, and you talk about it, and you talk about it. And that's, that's always your kind of your go-to. Well, you're going to have to change what you say about your body. Find out what God says about your body. Your body is the temple. So what do you do? You put together what I call a daily confession. Things that you say. What are the trouble spots in your life? What are the difficult things in your life that you're dealing with? Find out what God's Word says. See, I, you know what they are. I don't know. I mean, I know y'all generally, but I don't know the particular spots, but you do. And get God's word and find out what God says. And you begin to say about the situation. Now, when you first start, the devil's not going to be, ah, shucks. <laughs> you know, I thought I had him there. I did for a while. Oh, well. He's not just going to 
let, you know, roll over and, you know, be like the armadillo on the side of the road. They're always laying on their back with their little paws in the air. No, the devil's going to fight you. He's going to say, ah, you really believe that stuff? You really believe all that? You're just, you're really, you're just really just lying about it. You know the truth. And then somebody else will come along, they hear what you say, and they'll say, yeah, uh, I know how you really feel. You're not fooling me. The devil will challenge you. Why? Because he has to get you to say the wrong things, in other words, in in order to bring defeat into your life. If you're constantly talking health and healing... That's what you're going to have. But if, you're gonna, if the devil can keep you talking sickness and not feeling well, then he's using the power of your words against you. That really makes you your own worst enemy. And, and the devil just has to, he just kind of gets it started and he sits back and says, all right, here they go. Come here, check this out, watch this. There they go again. Uh, yep. They love that roller coaster. They just love that roller coaster. The devil says to his friends, that's one of my best roller coasters. <laughs> Up one day and down the next. Up one day and down the next. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And he just, you know, he gives us the, the ticket and says, here you go. Ride. Ride to your heart's content. Hallelujah. The law of words, what you say. Take the things you've been saying and turn your biggest problem into your greatest strength. This is not, this is not theory. You understand that? This is not just something that, you know is we're still, we're not sure about this, but we're pretty sure that this works, and so we'd like you for, you know, for you to try this and see if this works. That's what the devil say. I say, well, yeah, that's, you know, that's pretty, that's mostly true, but, um, you know, you can't just take the whole thing because um, there's really more to it than that. He'll try to talk you out of it. Try to talk you out of it. Hallelujah. Y'all are looking at me. Are you done yet? No, we've got another half hour, so. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. The law, the law of words. Your future is in your words. Your family's future is in what you say. Parents, what do you want for your kids? Have you written down what you want for your kids? Probably not. Probably not. You know how I know that? Crickets. (laughs) But that's no condemnation. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. You can write it down. What does write it down mean? Do it helps you. Get your words in line with your desire, with what you want. And you begin to say, you begin to speak over your kids. You begin to lay your, their, your hand on their head and call them. You, you take those powerful words, those words of life that you have, that will counteract anything that the enemy has done or is trying to do. And you unleash those words. And with your words, you bless them. And bring health and healing into their bodies and into their life and peace into their minds and um, brains. Yeah, like, like calling them smart and quick. Yeah, instead of, well, you know, you know, you know they're just a slow learner. Well, maybe they were. Maybe they have been. But today is the first day of the rest of your life, of the rest of your life. Today is the day where you can begin to change it. 
And listen, it may not change overnight. But you're not concerned with that. Because really, it didn't get the way it is overnight. You know, James' example of a ship is very fitting because, you know, when you turn the, when you turn the steering wheel, the rudder, the ship doesn't go, Err. no, it, it begins to turn. And you've got to maintain that turn until it's complete. It's like an aircraft. You know, you're just going to go, Err. no, you maintain the turn until the course of direction, the change of course is achieved, and then you bring it back to that, that place. So you're not moved that it didn't change overnight. You're not moved that it didn't change in a week or two weeks. But you know this, because you've changed what you're saying, because you're now saying what God says, that at some point, at some point, hallelujah. I just heard a testimony the other day about a family that had a child who had Down syndrome. And they went in the, the line for healing. They got ministered to. And nothing changed on the outside. But that family began to speak to that child. Health and healing over that child. Two years later. Two years later. I mean, they just started speaking over that child. Even to the point where people would just, especially family, would just... Write them off. You guys are idiots. Da, 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 da. They'd keep speaking over that child. No, he's healthy. He's normal. Everything. Two years later, they took a picture. And they're like, the difference was amazing just in the, the look. They had him test. There was very little left of any of the, the, uh, the effects of that. Not only in his mind, but in the way he looked. Why, why did that happen? Because of what they said. They continued to say. They believed in line with what God said. They kept saying what God said. And there, were, there was life. Instead of death, there were life in those words. Hallelujah. Life in those words. Remember, faith calls those things that be not as though they were. It doesn't say faith calls those things as they are. I call it like it is. No, faith calls those things that be not. Faith calls. Faith says. Y'all are people of faith, aren't you? And you are at Faith Life Family Church today, if you didn't know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is exciting. That means there's no bondage in your life that can remain. There's no sickness in your body that can stay. There's no financial difficulty in your life that can't change. If you'll get your words lined up with what the Word of God says and begin to say. Say it. Just keep saying it. I'm tired of hearing you saying it. Shut up, devil. Oh, sorry, honey. I thought it was the devil talking. <laughs> no, come on, spouses. We need to be in agreement on this, on these things. Speaking the same thing. All right. <laughs> God's plan sets the destination for you. you. God's plan for your life. Your words propel you to that destination. You see in your heart the place you want to go, and your words carry you there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Speak the answer. Speak the answer. Hallelujah. What is the answer? What God says. Or what your heart's desire is. Say that. Hallelujah. And then finally, develop the habit of speaking from your heart. Develop the habit of speaking from your heart. Not just out of your head. Just, just words out of your head are just idle words. They're just, no. Say what, get in the habit of saying what you believe in your heart. What, what is it you desire in your heart? What is it that you desire from God? 
and from your heart. That's just like with those words, every time. And so in our life, we say what we desire. We say what God says with our bodies. I mean, we're grateful. I'm 55. Never had any major illnesses. I mean, I had kidney stones a couple of times, about three times, I guess. And I figured out what was causing that and made some natural adjustment. You know, in this hot Georgia summer, you get dehydrated, you know, and so I have to make sure I stay hydrated in the summer so it wasn't just a spiritual thing. But health, amen, we don't have a medicine cabinet. Hallelujah. Why? Because it's not I don't believe in it. It's just don't need it. Well, I mean, yeah, we have some leave, we do, some Claritin, you know. Um, but really, you know, of course, we're, we're growing. Amen. But when something comes up, we speak to it. We get the Word of God out and speak the Word of God over our bodies, over our finances, over our kids. And son-in-law. And grandson. Yeah. Our words, have, they have power. Our words have life. Our words are death to the enemy and his works. But they're life to the plan and purpose of God. Full of life. Words of life. How about you? Hallelujah. Today. Say, today is the first day of the rest of my life. I'm making some changes. Today, things are changing because I'm changing the things I've been saying. Hallelujah. Stand up with me.